Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're focusing in today on some more of the manipulation traits and tactics of the covert as well as the overt narcissist. And I feel that this really uh, applies and that is really their manipulation tactic and personality dynamic of really sort of having a dominating viewpoint in relationships, in communication, in conversation. They are extremely one-sided, um, and especially as the Wizard of Oz and other narcissists that um, Eleanor Payson describes in her book, one-sided, just from that um, itself, that the title itself, we can derive so much um, meaning and information. But I want to really go into and delve into how it's expressed, what you really see, what you really feel, what you really experience, and then can I identify when you're in a relationship with a narcissist because I really do believe it's in the awareness, identification, and understanding that you are able to diffuse it and stop its toxicity and extinguish its abusive uh, force in you um, and its negative impact in your life. Um, and, you know, I, I receive uh, a number of emails from people who have, you know, who are just beginning their study and, um, and knowledge of this and really knowledge is power, especially when it comes to understanding these uh, manipulative and toxic pathological people. And of course it's very confusing because they can be outwardly very attractive, hold um, wonderful jobs, um, be so charming and um, affable to people, yet they can turn a cheek and turn a corner and the next thing you know they're abusive, they're neglectful, they exploit people, they um, exhibit pathological lying, um, in law, you know, uh, a lot of uh, impulsive sexual activity, um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, fear mongering and things of that nature. And I really want to um, discuss how that really then manifests or what you see as really kind of dominating viewpoint. And um, really I had discovered this as uh, working with a client earlier today. And um, basically she is discussing how um, siblings really tend to be very pervasive in terms of interjecting their viewpoints, their values, their opinions as the one and only and as really the right opinion and the right outlook and the only experience really that should be allowed, uh, especially in their very um, strongly developed and really sort of uh, chiseled family dynamic. In other words, the roles are clearly defined, are not subject to flexibility, change, evolution, adaptation. The, uh, the um, experience um, and the, uh, the covert narcissist in that family dynamic is very um, resistive, is very rigid and very um, active in her pathology meaning um, it's, it, it's tending to really develop and get a little bit worse with time. And it's very uh, clear to see how a lot of these pathological patterns are developing and really becoming a little bit more um, refined and uh, more caustic, I think is the word that I'm looking for. Caustic meaning causing that sort of toxic um, and anger, rage, or sort of reaction from healthy people in the environment. In other words, healthy people, when they're, when they're witnessing this, they're prone to have a reaction as is natural. And you probably feel when the narcissist in your life is engaging in these, uh, you know, they're dominating viewpoints. Um, they're trying to be really, uh, you know, they can never give you credit for your feelings or your emotions or, or how you celebrate something or how you participate in something. Um, they're going to scoff at you. They're going to, you know, Oh, so, you know, so you're just here for that. They're always going to try to minimize you, slight you, you know, knock you off two feet and have you weakened. And it's a very sort of sick uh, motivation. It's a sick drive. It's a sick desire. But the narcissist and pathological psychopathic people, um, they really uh, derive a great, you know, uh, pleasure from conquering and being better than others. So it's just like an exhaustive life and they really need to um, get their title across by, you know, they always need to kind of re-solidify 
and um, kind of reassert their stance and their position as superior in relationships, especially by dominating, have a very dominating viewpoint. In other words, um, you can't celebrate uh, Christmas in the right way. It's not good enough. You can't, um, you know, uh, celebrate, uh, you know, you, you can't have a vacation that um, is acknowledged. We have to ignore all your, you know, the wonderful things that are going in your life. If we're able to ignore it, we don't give it life. We don't give it credibility. We don't give it validity. So we don't have to deal with the fact that, you know, you're, um, you're growing and you're progressing in your life. And we're still kind of caught up in a whole different sort of uh, je ne sais quoi of, you know, bantering back and forth and we're perpetuating a certain sort of dynamic. Um, because chances are, if with, in, in my experience, my ex I have extensive experience with the, this population. And, um, you know, they, the narcissist, you know, they generally know who's healthy and who's not. They can see from your aura, from your, um, your being, you know, if, if you're a creative person, if you're a person with heart, emotion, empathy, and they, they learn, you know, who they can kind of dominate, uh, push buttons, and they really learn how to uh, overwork, you know, work one over on people. And um, having a very dominating viewpoint is something to really pay attention to, where they're not gonna, it's a, and if you look at a percentage, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna really try to um, suck at least, you know, 80, 90%, if not greater, of um, the floor, the opinion, their viewpoint, and they're going to basically try to minimize or, um, you know, siphon you and your viewpoint down. They're, they're, they're gonna try to uh, minimize this. It's a manipulation tactic. So if you can truly understand that if you're going through this experience where um, they just, they won't let, you know, you can't celebrate, you can't laugh, um, you know, they're always kind of like looking at you um, from the side, meaning askance, and just, you, you can, it's, it's, it's by a glance, you know, the narcissistic glare, the psychopathic stare, um, where they're really trying to uh, give you that uh, sort of very rough, rough you up, <laughs> rough edge, so to speak. Um, it is a way for them just to keep their superior sense and reassert their superiority. And even though, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not superior, um, their position is not always right, but they, they have a, a great drive and need to always constantly be right and have the only valid opinion, which of course is not true. They're extremely one-sided. So if you're feeling kind of attacked in this way and you're feeling uncomfortable because they don't give credence to your viewpoint, they don't give you, um, they're not able to laugh with you, they're essentially laughing at you, or they're not able to listen to you, they're talking at you, um, realize that this is a very um, sort of deficit in them, and it's a pathology, and this is a manifestation of that disease, which is, again, it's counter to the flow, and it's counter to really, um, you know, that, that fluidity in life, which is so necessary for health and happiness, joy and bliss, and to really live in those higher, richer emotions. And, um, and one thing I would also like to leave you with the understanding is that deep inside, even though they're dominating the, the, uh, the conversation, making it, you know, uh, making it seem like your viewpoint is unworthy or doesn't have any weight or validity. And, you know, they're trying to say, you know, you're, you're, you're not a true this, you're not a true that, you're not celebrating this, you're not a believer of that, you know, they're trying to ascertain false accusations. Realize that again, these statements are just a manipulation tactic to try to get a reaction and make you feel down and truncated. Um, and so um, realize though that as you make strides in your progress and you get stronger, they're also noticing this, but they're not going to acknowledge it because to acknowledge it would mean that they essentially have lost the battle. So, and I realize this is a long video here, but I want you to understand that continue to make your strides, com continue to embrace love love and life in all of the ways that you do, the unique ways that you do. Whether it's, you know, whatever you gather out of a, a season, whatever you gather out of an event, whatever your takeaway is, is your takeaway. And what you comprehend out of that is 
perfect for you and it doesn't have to be acknowledged and participated and uh, derived the same sort of uh, takeaway meaning um, what you what value you uh, derive out of it does not have to be like like theirs and there's so much that has to go in with this because um, we're talking about oftentimes the difference between narcissistic values and true values which are one is kind of authentic and genuine and others is just for show or for a facade um, so with that um, I will also uh, advise you that realize and I think this will make you all feel better is that as you continue to work on your strides and improve um, your personal strength, your empowerment, your personal boundaries, um, realizing um, through your knowledge and study of this that their dominating of the conversation is uh, basically a response of their insecurities that they feel. And as they see that you're no longer falling into their trap, their reactivity, you're, um, you know, you're, you're uh, not weakened by their comments, they will acknowledge that you're getting stronger. They're not going to admit it though, because to admit it would, again would mean that that, um, that you have won essentially and they have lost, but realize and understand that they do see and acknowledge the personal growth that you are exhibiting and demonstrating. They know, they get it, but they're not going to uh, validate that, confirm that, or congratulate that in you, even though they know it's it would be worthy of congratulations because they know how they have overpowered people. That's the, that's also part of the the sickness is they know how they've damaged, they know how they've hurt, they uh, they realize what they've done, but of course they never verbalize it. So continue your work, continue to embrace and take out of your experiences what you will, and not to do it as a way to people please them ever. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.